So, Daffathin Punkathin. Jeez, we're still talking about these guys? Yes, we're still talking about these guys. You guys really seem to like the discovery piece. And I said if it hit 50 likes, I would do another one. And uh, it hit 50. We also hit 1,000 subscribers, which is totally wicked. Seriously, thank you all so much. The council stays growing. Oh, we're gonna have a lot of fun with you. Can you believe that I was at 434 just a few days ago? I guess a long time electro group breaking up will do it to you. Homework, the debut studio album from the French duo released all the way back in 1997. This would be the beginning of what would start a tumultuous journey of electronic house that would span almost three decades. This album is full of little interesting bits and trials and errors and dog. And on top of that would be the project that propels the group into the mainstream with two staples in the career that we'll get to later. And after doing my homework, I found some crazy stuff on it on top of the things I already knew. So be sure to, again, leave a like if you're interested. So gather around the campfire, cause in this video, we'll be going over their first project, peel back its layers, and uncover some of the secrets in Daft Punk's homework. And just like the previous one, let's start at the beginning, shall we? So as mentioned in my last video, the boys actually got their start in music not from Daft Punk, but from a punk group they formed in 1992 called Darlin, consistent of your boys Tommy and Manny, but also their mutual friend Laurent Brankowitz. And the trio got their name from a Beach Boys song of the same name. Laurent would go on to form his own band with his brother called Phoenix, and did really well, which I'm not 100% sure on this, so don't quote me, but I remember reading somewhere a while ago that his band got their name from Daft song of the same name to pay homage, which if that's true, is really awesome. If it's not, yeah. But even after going their separate ways, they were still cool with each other, as Phoenix even brought them out as a guest in a 2010 show at Madison Square Garden. But back to the Tin Men, after not seeing much success with their rock group, the French boys would recoup and reinvent themselves, doing a complete 180 and transition into electronic music, releasing their debut single The New Wave in 94. That single also included a track called Alive The New Wave Final Mix, and would be the basis for the track of the same name on the album. The next year, in 95, the boys would recoup once more and put together what would be the first single and breakout hit we all know of, Da Funk. But that wasn't always the case. When the song came out, nobody really cared about it much. With a pressing release of only 2,000 copies, it got a bigger boost in popularity after acts such as the Chemical Brothers started incorporating it in their set lists. But it didn't really start gaining buzz until the boys re-signed with Virgin Records in late 96 and released it again. Thomas in an interview at the time said that they were inspired after listening to a lot of G-Funk hip-hop, such as the absolute classic song Regulate by Warren G. They were really trying to go for that hip-hop sound apparently, but nobody Nobody agreed with them. Nowadays, this song is looked at with high regards, being enjoyed by people in and outside the medium, and used in movies and TV shows, becoming a staple in their career, and for Acid House as a genre. And the boys clearly thought it was great too, making it the final track on the album again, just in reverse. It was just that good. And after a little more promo, and being in production since technically 94, the album would release on January 20th of 1997, and receive critical acclaim across the board, getting the world's attention onto French house music. It's funny because it didn't even start with the idea of making an album, they were just making songs for singles, and halfway through just thought, eh, why not? As well as Discovery, this album also came with a movie, The Daft Movie, a story about dogs, androids, firemen, and tomatoes. This wasn't really a movie per se, but more so a compilation of all the music videos that accompanied the album. The album would go on to be certified gold by the RIAA, with the songs and singles still in rotation around the world. Speaking of which, a perfect segue, as a couple months later, they would release the technically third or fourth single, depending on how you look at it, but label-wise, the second single being the hit classic track Around the World on March 17th of 1997, the single version only being around 4 minutes, but the album version clocking in at a whopping 7. And what are you listening to in that time? Well, if you said people going insane for 7 minutes, you'd only be half right. The song is super bouncy, with the phrase being repeated throughout the song. They say it 88 times on the radio version, and a whopping 144 times on the album version. Somebody must have had fun counting that. Australian music publication Max had the song placed at number 365 on their 1001 Greatest Songs of All Time list back in 2013, but then updated it in 2018 and went down to 517. Congratulations, Jacksons. Black Eyed Peas member Will I Am tried to do a remix to his song solo song, I Got It From My Mama, back in 06, with an uncleared use of the track, and when Daft Punk found out, they were pissed, and said he couldn't use it. Which is funny, because if you remember, the next year, they would let Kanye sample their song for Stronger, and would you look at that, another segue. Now as I mentioned in the last video, Homework does sampling on it too, but not nearly as much as Discovery, but that doesn't mean it's not riddled with it either. There's quite a good bit of sampling done on this album too, from basic chops to fully layered tracks, there's a lot going on, so let's take a look. The first example being the first track, Daft 
Direct and the Radio Station interlude, sampling this drum break from the song Bounce, Rock, Skate, Roll by Vaughn Mason and crew right at the beginning of the song. They also use it again as the drums for Defunk as well. For the song Revolution 909 and Defunk, those crowd and street noises that you hear on them is actually taken from this royalty-free sound library from the people over at the Hollywood Edge. One of my favorites though has to be Teachers. That kick drum is just punching my ears. Probably the most basic on here when it comes to sampling, but that's honestly why I love it so much. The song samples the track If You Leave Me Now by Viola Wills. Literally only two chops on here, one at the 328 minute mark, and the next back at the 136 minute mark. They also use the same song for Fresh, but at different parts of the song. That's back at the 1 minute 25 mark. It's always cool to see an artist use the same sample in different ways and take different parts from it. They're really milking that license. If you want a song of them just going crazy on their pads, look no further than the 10th track, High Fidelity. They did not let up on this. The song samples the track Just The Way You Are by Billy Joel, and with over 15 individual sample bits, each new loop is made up of new parts of the song, micro bits if you will. I can't show you them all here, that takes way too long. So if you want to see it done, I highly recommend this video from Undertune, as they fully break it down and show each individual sound bite and show the whole song start to finish, as well as going through other samples in their catalog. It's a really fun watch. It's also kind of long, but if you have the time, take a look. And lastly, I want to talk about something a little left field, and it's what the boys did right at the beginning of their career when signing to Virgin, as I'm not sure a lot of people know about this. So when people sign record deals, in the contracts, artists usually agree to hand over things such as publishing, distribution rights, and the biggest one, a percent of, or all of their masters. A master is the final mixed and mastered version of a song, and an artist master is arguably one of the most important things, as it allows them to decide who and who can't use their music, where it goes, and who gets the most money from the cut. It's not uncommon for an artist to not own their masters nowadays, as they tend to give it up for, hopefully, more exposure and online pushing from their labels. Daft Punk decided right at the beginning that they would only sign to Virgin if it was a distribution deal, which it was, which means that for their whole career, up until Ram, the boys would own all of their masters to all of their albums. Like, that's unheard of. Back in the 90s, you can muscle your way out of not giving away everything, but nowadays, it's virtually impossible to sign to a major and still keep your stuff. So, after all was said and done, Daft Punk's homework would go on to become a clubhouse classic, and from this point on, the boys would start their tour and begin the music project that would undoubtedly change both the music industry and their lives forever. During this time, they weren't really hiding their faces for music and stuff, but slowly near the end of the years, they would start wearing masks in public and interviews until they stopped doing interviews altogether, at least video ones, until they got their robot persona, and go down as one of the best electronic musicians of all time. I mean, they just immediately fell off. They just stopped making music. So yeah, what do you guys think of homework? Was this the project that introduced you to the boys? Or was it something later down the line? Leave a comment, I'd love to know. And subscribe if you're not already. It's much appreciated. Again, this is really fun to do, but I'll probably hold off on doing the other albums as of right now. I don't want to become one of those Daft Punk channels. I just got out of the Kanye and Eminem rut, and there's a certain Cactus Boy that's on my radar, but I'll get to him soon enough. But I'm definitely down to visit them later on in the future, so be on the lookout for that. And you know what? If this video gets because the last one was way too easy and you guys totally went ham on it. 300 likes. I will do Human After All a lot sooner than later. You know the drill. That one's probably the weirdest. Coolio. Coolio. Cue the outro. Again. See, my first Daft Punk album that I remember listening to was Discovery. So that was like the pinnacle of like peak Daft Punk for me. So when it came time to go back to homework, Bro, I, I hated it. I thought it was just garbage. Really just the second half. The quality was just night and day back then. I'm pleased to say I've warmed up to the album over the years as I've grown older. But I can, I still cannot do rolling and scratching and rock and roll. I just, uh, I, I, I can't do those tracks. Like More so rock and roll. It's literally just noise to me. I, I can't. If that is your jam, then by all means, keep jamming it up. I guess I'm not much of a rock and roll kind of guy. I'll gladly be a teacher though. See ya!